<laughs> Not yet, but it will be. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Wow, this is amazing. Take a look around, all right, and you notice that the majority, you are more center, for, you're more forward than usual. And that's a good thing, which means I don't have to yell in the back of the church. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Let's take just a moment or two to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship our Almighty God. Turn to number 400 in your blue hymnal, number 400. And as we are instructed, let us stand and all creatures of our God and King, lift our voices and let us sing praises to our Almighty God. Can I get it out in here? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do verses 1, 2, 3, and 7.
42. Begins on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 356, the Gloria. Together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ. Only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ has mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. All of us with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's word. Our first lesson comes from the Wisdom Book, Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. The reading can be found in our online bulletin, through personal Bibles, and on page 535 of the Pew Bible. A reading from Proverbs 31. A capable wife who can buy. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servants. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. <coughs> she puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in dress. She makes herself coverings, her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sexes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, 
and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. <coughs> she looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is, in, is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her her share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 1. Psalm can be found on page 585 in the Book of Common Prayer and your online book. So let us pray Psalm 1 responsibly, my whole verse. I will be doing. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scorn. Their delight is the law of the Lord. And they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. He is not my soul with the wicked. They are like the chaps between the trees of the Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes nor the sinner in counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our second lesson comes from the letter of James, starting in chapter 3, verse 13. The reading can be found in our online bulletin, your personal Bibles, and on page 982 of your pew Bible. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness and holy <coughs> wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, Devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that, uh, that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot, cannot obtain it, so you exchange in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What are you arguing on the way? They were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. understand. 
or I said something in a frame that doesn't make any sense to you. The only way it's going to make sense is if you raise your hand and say, Father Daniel, I don't understand that. Can you explain it? Now, sometimes I'll stop and write whatever I'm doing and I'll explain it right then and there because I got news for you. If you don't understand it, there's a good possibility some of them out there don't understand it either. Okay? And we always look to you guys to ask the best questions in the first place. But sometimes I won't be able to do that because then I'll lose my train of thought and I'll say, remind me of that question after church and I will come back to it after church. And sometimes you may want to tell your parents, hey, help remind, help remind me of this question. Okay? Right? Yeah. So, never be afraid to ask. That is one thing that I really enjoy doing is answering questions. I mean, I know all the answers. But I will try. I can help. Right? Does that make sense? Is that something y'all can do? Is there any questions that you have right now? I know you would. Can anyone help you? Only if they know more than you do. In a language. In a language, if you if you want to learn something about Spanish, I'm not the guy to ask because I don't speak Spanish. But if you need to talk Spanish, there are all, how many people back there speak Spanish? Raise your hand. Way high. Look, you got all kinds of people back there who can help you with Spanish. How many people back there speak German? Right? I can speak. How many of y'all speak French? You got any French speakers back there? So this is not the place to come and ask a French question. <laughs> But I, but I will tell you this, we will help you where we can. Okay, we will help you where, first place to answer is always your parents. Outside of church, inside of church you can ask me. You can ask a lot of them. But always be ready to ask the question so that we can all learn together. Ote? Ote, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you already know our questions and you are ready to answer them even before we ask. Give us the strength to learn what we don't know and not be afraid to do so. And we ask that you go with these young ones as they continue to learn and grow more about you. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen? Amen. All right, now I'm going to ask a favor from you. Would you please help me off the floor? Thank you. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, thank you.
they will ask me all number of really basically simple questions. What about forgiveness? What about this action, that action? What about you know this going on in the world? And what do I think about this, that, and the other? And I will, you know me, I can talk to a doorpost. I grew up. <laughs> I will answer any question that I can. And the reason that I will do that is because after answering the question, they will say, well, thank you, I appreciate that, because I was at this church, and I tried to ask the minister this question. And the minister said, I don't have time for the question. All you have to do is pray about it. Just read your Bible and blow them off. And, and it doesn't make any sense to me. It's almost as if the priest and the minister was in the position of the disciples as they are walking with Jesus after having left Galilee. In our gospel reading today, it comes right after some really important stuff that has happened in the life of Jesus. They have already come down from the Mount of Transfiguration, where uh, Peter, James, and John were up there, and they saw Jesus transformed into all white, and they heard the voices, and Jesus tells them, don't tell anybody, and they're going, but we've got to tell anybody, and he says, no, don't tell anybody. This is after Peter has confirmed that he is the Christ. So these are two very positive things. And it's also after Peter has tried to rebuke Jesus when he explained to him what's about to happen in his life. Jesus tells him, well, in a bit, uh, I'm, I'm going to be turned over to men, I'm going to be tortured, I'm going to be killed, and then after three days I'm going to rise again. And Peter's like, oh no, you're not. And Jesus goes, oh yes, I am. Peter's been rebuked, and everybody else was like, oh, man, they, he just smacked Peter. He's going to smack Peter. What is he going to do to me? Put some fear into their head. So now they're walking along the road, and instead of wondering what's going to happen after Jesus is killed or after he arises, these guys are still thinking about what's going to take place here on earth. That is the nature of the argument that the disciples were having as they were walking along. Do you remember earlier that uh, John and James, the sons of thunder, had the audacity to ask Jesus, who's going to be sitting on your right and on your left when you come into the glory? Right? The, the disciples are going, hey, you know what? He's about ready to come. He is our earthly messianic king. He's going to come and he's going to restore Israel to its right place. And he's going to kick out the Romans, which is all the Old Testament prophecies. If you read it in that particular vein, and they're thinking that way, they're concentrating on what's going on on earth. Jesus is telling them what's going to happen here and in heaven. And they're worried about, in their conversation, what they're arguing about is who's going to be the greatest. There's a competition going on amongst the disciples. Competition is a way for us to rise to the next level. Competition is a way for us to be pushed or to push ourselves to be other than what we are in that moment. Here in the United States and in the West, we take competition to often an unhealthy level. If you're not first, you're last. You heard that before? Second place is just the first loser. <laughs> oh yeah <clears throat> think about just a second the emphasis on winning that happens every Friday night in every town in the state of Texas football 
Hey, anybody have a favorite football team? Come on now, raise them up. How many of you take it personally when your team loses? <laughs> right? You will sit there and you've got your phone bricks sitting next to you on the couch and you're throwing them at the TV and you're cussing out the quarterback when he's throwing his fifth interception of the game. Right? As if our participation, our competition in that game from our seats is going to make a difference as to what happens. We are very competitive. But are we being competitive about something that actually matters? If we're focusing on what's happening here, have we not lost sight of what's going to happen in heaven? Jesus asks the disciples as they were on their way, what are you arguing about on the way? And they were silent. For on their way, they were arguing about who was to be the greatest. Being a little fly on the back of one of the animals that they're walking with, I can just hear this conversation. For once, Peter is not saying a word. Because he's already been rebuked by Jesus, so he's probably feeling a little hurt. And he's just going to stand back there and let the rest of these guys duke it out. Where we're the sons of thunder, we're John and James. We know we're great. And Matthew's going, well, no, I'm really great because I'm the only one who's writing all of this stuff down so we have a record of it. And the other disciples are... <laughs> Judas is going, well, I'm good because I keep all the money. Yeah. They're competing and fighting with each other. And Jesus knows this and asks them, <coughs> what are you arguing about? They're afraid to answer as well as they should be. Because they're thinking here, not there. And this is an opportunity for Jesus to let them know what true greatness looks like when one is heavenly minded but still bound here on earth. He throws things in complete disarray. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Leaders in our country are always out front. And as the leader is out front, the leader is expecting to be leading, to having everybody following behind him or her or them. So they're leading and they're going, yes, we're great. We've got all this stuff and we're moving in the right direction. There's only one problem with leading from the front. You have no idea what's going on behind you. If you're leading from the front, when people take a wrong turn, do you know it? No, because you are focusing forward. If people start falling off and they get injured, how can you help them? Because you're up front. It's difficult to lead from that. I want you to think about this in the next 47 days. How those people who want to lead us, where are they in position of the first must be last and servant of all? The best way to lead people is to shepherd them and to make sure that they are out in front of you so that you can guide them and keep them along the path that they're supposed to walk. For the last couple of years when we've gone up Mount Cristore, it has always been my plan and my position to be at the very end of the pack. I learned this in, when I was working with the youth up at Camp Stoney. We would take the middle schoolers and the high schoolers on a camp out overnight. And we always had a trail, and everybody knew the trail, but I was always the 
the very last person in line. And the reason that I was only the last person in the line is that if you were slower than me, you really had a problem. Right? I'm carrying an industrial strength pack, and I am not moving fast at all. But if I am passing up a middle schooler or a high schooler, then there is something going wrong. And I need to make sure that I can help everybody get to where we need to go pretty much at the same time. Now there's, of course, the guys out at the front, the really athletic ones, who are running down the trail with their 45-pound pack. And it's like, all right, just stay on the trail. If you get lost, stay put, blow your whistle, and we'll pick you up when we get there. But I'm always in the back because there's always one or two kids who've overpacked, right? They were supposed to have three sweatshirts, they packed 10, right? They were supposed to have three bottles of water, they had a gallon and a half, and they couldn't carry it all. So I would come up behind them and I would help take off their load, and I would put it on myself, like I was so that strong. But they would help me because I was last, and I could walk at that pace to help them. And as such, I led from the back. Now, when I was doing it, I was not thinking of this passage. I was just thinking about, if I lose any one of these kids, I'm never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> but it makes sense. The only way that you can truly lead is from the back. So that we all end up going to the same place and getting there sometime in the same area. Jesus had that perfectly thought out. And I only thought of my participation in this leadership role last night when I was given this sermon. Whoever wants to be first must be last and servant of all. And to drill it in a little bit deeper, he takes a young child and puts it in the middle of it. Now, unless you think Jesus has this really great love affair with children, which he does, unless you think that he had some exalted role of children in his life, which he may have, Jesus also recognized that children in this time and, and day and age did not have some exalted <coughs> role in the community. Children were a drain, and they were only useful at some point in time as they could contribute. But what children are, by and large, are honest. They can't disassemble what's going on. They can't read into anything other than what they see. They are going to be their genuine selves as children. When you smile at a child, they smile back at you. When you give a hug to a child, they will hug you back. Because they are thinking very simply. They haven't overthought. They haven't complicated the matter at all. When they receive love, they give love. When they receive anger, they're going to give back anger. When they receive pain, they're going to give pain. But when they receive affection, they're going to be affectionate. When they receive the gift of Jesus, that is what they're going to give back. Are you following me? Okay. So he puts one of the little ones in there and he says, you've got to receive just as these children receive. Here's a good person who loves me and is going to take care of me. I'm going to love. How many of y'all smile at children in the grocery store? Right? How many times do the children smile back? Right? You catch the eye of a child and they'll be like. <laughs> and you'll sneak them a little way. And they'll go. Sometimes maybe grab a hold of mom or dad and hide behind them and do this whole peekaboo thing. We need to receive Jesus like that. The 
because Jesus is coming to us like that. Jesus coming to us honest, pure, with no hidden agenda, with love and forgiveness and grace. We receive it, we can give it back. To do anything else is to add to what Jesus is giving that is not supposed to be there. And when we do it, we might be trying to compete for Jesus' affection. We might be trying to be in competition for what Jesus is going to offer us. But Jesus is going to give us each everything that we need. We don't need to be in competition with anything or anybody else. We just need to love and receive his grace and then give it back. When I first started on this journey towards being a priest, uh, I went to uh, a church in downtown Dallas. And, of course, this is downtown Dallas. So there are huge churches. And I walked into the church, and it's like, yeah, I'm going to be this kind of priest. Right? This is going to be my congregation. When I was on sabbatical, I went to a number of different churches, all of them significantly bigger than this church here. And you'd go in on a Sunday morning, and there was the pastor standing up there, and he had all of his finery. And there was a massive choir over here, and there was a praise band and an organist over here, and every seat was in this like, why can't I be like that? And then I realized there is no way I'd want to be like that. I want to be like that. I want to be that kind of priest and dealing with that kind of stuff. I need to be the best priest that I can be right here. I don't need to be in competition with them because I don't want their headaches. <laughs> right? I don't want their responsibility. When I'm in competition with somebody else, I will always lose. When we compare ourselves to other people, we will always come up on the short end of the stick. So the only person I'm going to be in competition with is me, for me to be a better me, with God's help today than I was yesterday. It's hard to lose competition with yourself, but I have. <laughs> trying real hard not to be. Trying hard to receive as the children have received. To give as I have been given. And to follow my Savior. And doing it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turning to page 358, page 358, let us stand and affirm what we know to be true, as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We are members of one body, with Christ as the head, my brothers and sisters, what do we believe? Together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son.
Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has yes. spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Kneeling. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ, church, and the world. The prayers of the people for the days after Pentecost are four and five and start on page 389 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop, elect. Michael, son, our bishop. Daniel and Scott, the priests. And for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Today we pray especially for Stephanie, Kim, Laura, Megan, Elsa, Jerry, Christina, Kimber, Jeanette, Judy M, Ricky, Justin, Charles, Leo, Seth. Kevin, Helen, Maricela, Pal, Aaron, Maria, Mariana, Mark, Bianca, Reverend, William, Angie, Tina, Tom, Anna, Patty, Danny J, Hugo, Nancy, Kay, and Jan. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that in spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and people, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joe, our president, and Michelle and Greg, our governor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for the congregation searching for a rector, vicar, and the diocesan council. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, Heavenly Father, who by your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised to all those who seek your kingdom and its righteousness, all things necessary to sustain their lives. Send us, we entreat you, in this time of need. 
such moderate rain and showers, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently or aloud. We pray for those who are dealing with the effects of Alzheimer's and dementia. We pray for those who are being affected by gun violence across the country and the world. We pray for your spirit of peace to come across those areas that are ravaged by war and conflict. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to travel this coming week, and I pray your eternal mercy would be upon me. We pray for all drivers on our streets that they may not get distracted, take their time, and reach their destination safely. Rejoicing. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of those who are not with us today in this church. Heavenly Father, I pray that, um, that you would bless them this day and that they would return to us or to another place of worship, Heavenly Father, um, if this isn't the place that you're calling them to. I ask, Father, that when I pray for something stupid, that you would ignore me. <laughs> Help us to pray according to your will. Thank you, Father, for this congregation. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Luke and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two and allow the Holy Spirit to bring to mind those things which we need to confess privately before we continue with our public corporate confession. Thank you. 
be sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The saints of the church, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. So we can get these kits to you so that you can take them out into the community. 
And not only these three, but if there are other members of the congregation you have not seen for a while that you are in contact with, you can take communion to them. Okay? Uh, it's not that big a deal. And you'd be going to a friendly source. These are people you already know. Um, birthdays and anniversaries. Come on down. Busted. Come on down. Bring them. Bring them. You want to ask me if you know how long. How long you've been around? Oh, no. It's my anniversary. It's your anniversary. Oh, dear. I bet oh, you know this answer. I bet you I don't. And you have to. I married you. I know. <laughs> your first year here. How long have you been here? That depends upon who's counting. Some people say 40. Other people say too long, 12. It's a left here, too. So we got See? Yeah. one year shorter. One year shorter. I've been here for 12. Wow, 11 years. Correct. Who are you? <laughs> you are? I'm Haas. Everybody say hi, Haas. Hi. And who's your bride? Vanessa. Everybody say hi, Vanessa. Hi. 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 It was an appropriate reading this morning, too. So It was? Yeah. Oh, who? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 It was on time. You think? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 31. There are no coincidences in God's economy, are there? No. And what do we got going on over here? Another anniversary, another appropriate reading. Wouldn't you say amen? Yes. And she's going, uh huh, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you? Patricia. Everybody say hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> and who's this handsome man standing next to you? Ben. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> ben. Everybody say hi, Ben. Hi, ben. All right, now y'all have been fruitful and multiplied, so we don't have to have an anniversary without children, at least in this circumstances. So, who's this one right here? Everybody say hi, Eli. Hi, Eli. And? Ethan. Everybody say hi, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. And here we have? Maya. Say hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Maya, have I been getting a whole bunch of emails because you're selling stuff, or is that a scam? I don't even know I, 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 oh, oh, so you've been sending them out in her name? Yeah. They're automatic. Okay, good. Then I can respond. You know, because you got to be careful. And you are? Yeah. Noah. Everybody say, hi, Noah. Hi, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> How many years? 20. 20? Whoa.
Sunday, next Sunday the 29th. The bishop is coming! The bishop is coming! Three o'clock, okay? It would be really great if everybody here was not here Sunday morning and came at three o'clock next Sunday afternoon. If you have signed up to be confirmed, or you would like to be confirmed, and you have not let Lorenzo know, that's Lorenzo. We need to know your information so that the bishop can confirm you. If you are interested in being confirmed, you he has a two o'clock, two o'clock meet and greet. He wants to meet with all the confirmants. There are there's at least one other confirmant coming from another congregation who will be joining us at that service. There's two. There are two. There are two confirmants. So that's going to be a really cool thing. We should have a fairly packed house. I've asked the Saturday service group to not come on Saturday, to come on Sunday. I'm asking the Sunday morning group to come Sunday afternoon. After the service, we will have a re uh, reception and kind of a potluckish kind of thing. We'll do something, sandwiches, soups, sweet breads, whatever. We'll do something afterwards uh, af uh, in celebration of the confirmation and the bishop's visit, okay? So, if you cannot make it and you insist on being here on Sunday morning, I will be here as well. No pressure or guilt or shame will be shown upon you if you decide to show up here Sunday morning. It's <laughs> If I belong to Jesus 
us through your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the saint who, and all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. <coughs> By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host, we are his guests. This table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty. Please come to receive from the table of grace.
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Please stand for our processional recessional hymn.